What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode four of Tricky Talk. Yeah. We've just been trying to figure out what his writing says. <laughs> <laughs> We've had all these ideas wrote down, and we were like, I was looking at it for ages, and I'm like, what does that say? What does that say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's it looks what it like is. layman, possibly. So that's what it is. <laughs> so this subject is about being remembered, um, like how to get remembered at a wedding or a restaurant or whatever gig you've got basically mm. so now we've touched on the subject in some of the previous ones as it's just a card trick mm. and different elements that you can do to be remembered as a magician with mm. that particular card trick and different elements mm -hmm. so it, it comes from like so when I I was doing a, a gig last night and they said to me oh can you do the one where you draw an X on the hand and I was thinking Double cross. <laughs> every magician has that. And every magician does it. It is the probably the best working trick that's ever came out, in my opinion. Yeah. Like everyone knows it. Um, well, it got there was done. A, th a thing the other week. David Blaine was doing double cross. Was he? There was a video going around saying even David Blaine does double cross. Yeah, it's 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 just phenomenal. How does that get from there to on your hand? And it's it's and going back to the previous episode. It's not a card trick. It's something completely different. It's kind of an everyday carry. Mm. Um, everyone recognises and knows what a Sharpie is. It's a permanent marker. Um, what else? It was on Britain's Got Talent, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, who did it? It was Alakazam's owner's son. Harry Nardi. Harry Nardi, that's it. He did it on Britain's Got Talent. Well, I think he did it with a group of other magicians. I don't know if it was him but he did it with a group of other magicians ages mm. ago. Um, so everyone knew it from that moment because before that, it would have just been the magicians doing yeah. it at uh, weddings and stuff like that. But yeah, it's that's something, like that trick in itself is doing something to be remembered. So yeah. do, do you think it'd be beneficial to, to come up with something signature to yourself to be remembered? How about that? Because every magician's doing double cross, mm. right? And every magician remembers double cross. So is there not something that you can do or a trick that you can do or something that you say that's only unique to you to be remembered? Because that's a good way of being remembered, but not for someone else's trick. I don't know, because there's a lot of people try to develop their own tricks or take something and change it. Mm -hmm. And that trick normally works because the way that trick works. Yeah. So if you take double cross and then I don't know, change it to something that appears on the arm. Yeah. It's a completely different thing. It, it might be unique to yourself, mm -hmm. but it might ha have as big impact. I, and I just say so. that because some things that I've been, because I, I don't do a, a double cross an awful lot purely because mm -hmm. everyone does it and everyone already knows it now. Yeah. It's kind of been worked to the end of its mm -hmm. life. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can still get away with it. And people ask me to repeat it all the time. Um, people in Empire especially, they're like, oh, can you do the X one? Can you do the X one? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but something that I've been doing recently, which, you know, take this as you will, but I'm not afraid to tell, and especially even at a wedding, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not afraid to tell a bad joke. Like, <laughs> maybe an offensive joke, maybe a rude joke. I've heard some of them. I'm not afraid to tell them because... You know, you get all these people going to these weddings that are, you know, that you're paid to be there. You have to be professional. You have to, mm. you know, um, you have to perform well. But, you know, just, I just take that extra little risk. I do ask them, like, what the type of sense of humour is before yeah. I start. But um, I'm sort of being, re not remembered for being the rude magician or the, <laughs> the offensive magician, but, like, people remember me because I'm not afraid to tell a bad joke that normally would could offend other people and stuff like that so yeah. I've been doing that a lot um, and it's a bit risky because <laughs> you, you know you might get some people that'll go oh you shouldn't have said that or <laughs> something like that but I, I obviously I gauge my audience a lot yeah, before definitely. I start pulling them ones out but mm. as I say I'm not afraid to I'm not that classic magician that all flourishes and stuff like this yeah, or that gives you a hand not that one the clean one yeah yeah <laughs> I do say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but um, yeah, you're right. Just the, the classic gag lines and stuff like that. Mm. Do you know when you do the classic gag lines though? That's the first time, and you all guys probably know this. That's the first time that they've ever heard that. Ever yeah, well, there's that thing with. Um Yeah.
and yeah, the majority well, been... of people. So many of them say no, and I'm like, what, never? You've never seen a magician that go, well, on TV. Yeah. And I'm like, where have you been? So it's like, the same with like the double cross stuff. So there's one element of at the same place, if the magician's there all the time to perform that, most mm -hmm. people have seen it if they go there regularly. Mm -hmm. But at weddings, most people haven't seen magic. So doing yeah. that for them is... The hack lines and, and gags and stuff like that. Yeah. Put your hand up, I know the clean one. They'll laugh at that because it's the first time they've really ever heard that. It's like, can you make my wife disappear? That's yeah, the first give time. Give 20 they, quid, I've got a shovel in the car. That's the, you right. have to be nice when you sit when they say these lines <laughs> because that's the first time they've... And they've... The, that's the first time they've ever heard that joke. That's the first yeah. time they've ever made that joke. So they think it's the funniest thing in the world, mm -hmm. even though we've heard it <laughs> 10,000 times. Like, I, 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 that, that's why I also... I won't ever do that with any any spectators or anything like that. But when people say them lines, oh, can you get the can you make the next round appear? <laughs> or can you, uh, can you make my bill disappear? <laughs> and I go... Well, I actually have a few outs for that. So I have uh, Extreme Burn, that's another great worker. Mm. Um, I go, oh, well, I could not. Can you, make a, can you make a lottery ticket? No, sorry, can you make a five pound note turn into a 20? Yeah. And last night I said, oh, no, but I can make a lottery ticket turn into a 100. And he went, <laughs> what? And I said, yeah. And I did the Extreme Burn. He was just yeah. like, Jesus Christ, he loved it. <laughs> extreme burn I say in a week if I had a pound for every single time someone said one of them lines how much do you think I'd have and they go oh, I don't know 100 quid and I go <laughs> exactly bang and I do the move and, and 100 quid mm. and then that kind of shuts them up saying the lines the lines to be fair it gets a good laugh but um, what were we talking about before that about the uh, the double cross and double cross how a lot of people haven't seen magic before oh yeah but yeah mentally yeah. I, mean, I can't believe a lot of people haven't seen magic live because mm. there's a lot of us now I'd say yeah. especially in Teesside there's a fair few magicians and I imagine in major cities there's loads as well mm -hmm. but then it's like how many places now other than weddings are you seeing a magician unless you go into a show mm. because wedding magicians have just became so popular but where are you seeing them other than that because yeah. I, I do restaurants We're getting married soon, <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, cool, I'll do that." Um, but the, the stuff like Tom Bolton's Magic Corner, is it yeah, Magic yeah. Corner? But that's again, the, you're that's paying like to go see a show there, aren't you? Show, yeah. Where else are you going to go see uh, see Magic? I know there's. He's he has, got a uh, Magic uh, Smoke and Mirrors. Is it? Is it called Smoke and Mirrors? Where is it? Don't know, but I went to slides a bath. And that's like oh. a magic bar. Yeah. So people come in, buy a drink, and see magic. Yeah, yeah. And I think Mark's place is the same. I think it's called Smoke and Mirrors. Correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> it so, might be yeah. another place. But I'm yeah, sure there's what's Russ's Russ's at Blackpool. House is Only them three. I suppose the only other. Thomas? Yeah. I don't know how many like there is. Common. Daniel Dorian Johnson. To be. But, um,. Yeah, I suppose that's somewhere that you'd see him. I just wish that more restaurants. I'm not. I'm not begging for more residencies <laughs> here, but like, please feel free to hire one of us. Uh, no, but your food. You sit down. You have your food. You leave. But yeah. a little bit of entertainment walking around. Um, just some some extra, something nice that you. Maybe you weren't expecting, or maybe you'd mm. go specifically because there's a magician walking around. I did this yeah. um, 
I used to work in this place in uh, Norton, and it, it closed down after uh, New Year. I, I used to work here when it used to be the other place, and um, I said, would you like any magic? And he said, yeah, absolutely, we'll do some. <laughs> But not only did that, I realised he had everything going on. He had fire breathers um, in his in his restaurant. He had a DJ. Mm. Um, he obviously had me. So it was. Yeah. People sometimes go. You, you get them for free basically because you you were going to go out for. You haven't been yet, have you? I haven't no. been either, um, but I haven't ate there. But it's a, it's a show bar where you you, uh, you 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 take your set. You're there, you're there like in a lot of time, I believe, mm. and there's always a show on when you when you're there. So I think they've had every single cover band going <laughs> or, or a tribute to everyone yeah. um, they also do murder mystery nights they do um, what else do they do they have just singers on constantly mm. um, they've had a magician in there with a circus act before mm. um, I'm not personally in talks with them but a, a friend of mine who I work with doing magic at the restaurants he's apparently been in talk with them about doing a little show and I think they want so I've heard I think they want like a 20 minute show mm -hmm. maybe close up magic as well and then later on with the next group come in yeah. another 20 minute show and then more close up magic mm -hmm. so it, it's a great thing well, to, I think your, there's, uh, um, to your restaurants there's a Peacock I believe yeah 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 so Tom's worked there yeah so I've got a couple of friends who do like aerial performing and fire breathing and stuff and they work there as well and I've seen Tom doing it I think that's similar it's like a a pub or a bar I don't know if you can get food there yeah, yeah. it's like a central stage and people perform like you said Tom's been perform magic so mm -hmm. sort of similar to the magic bar where yeah, people yeah. go have a drink and see magic but it's not specifically just for magic oh but back to the subject that I can't really <laughs> we've just went off topic here back to the subject so what do you think doing in restaurants is going to get you remembered as oh there's a magician there that does this I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Seen it, that's absolutely mind blowing for them. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing of when you said, like, to change it, could you change it? Like, people's done it with a heart. It's mm -hmm. something slightly different. Mm -hmm. But then. We know the other one as well, don't we? We do. I think the, the cross is so simplistic mm -hmm. that. Go and tell all their friends like, oh, there's a guy, and you don't believe what he does. He, he puts an X on your hand. But I'm just trying to think of like it's what like, the tricks. He draws that... a little love heart, and yeah. the love heart disappears. It, it doesn't have the same effect as like. Do you know? I tell crossed. you another trick that gets uh, remembered a lot. Um, and Chris was telling me about this, and he told uh, Luke House to do it at weddings, and he said he still performs it to this day. Mm. His anniversary waltz. Yeah. Like fusing them two cards together, it's just like <laughs> people love that. And I'm like, it's it's especially for weddings, like, oh yeah, especially for weddings, it's such a simplistic trick, but it's really, really powerful. Isn't mm. it? Um, what else? And then the other thing, which is how I got into magic, was the Omni deck. Yeah. The Omni. Like being remembered as the magician, as That's well, right, it had the cards, that. and that the well. cards disappeared, and you're left with this plastic block. Yeah, I suppose that's another one that gets you remembered. I was like, how's that happened? So I think this conversation is now turning into true workers. Like mm. what what are, because they're the tricks that are going to get you remembered, mm. the true working tricks. Double cross is a working trick. Invisible decks are very good working trick that everyone uses, but yeah. is um, are you remembered for that? Because going Possibly back a few like... podcasts ago, you said something along the lines of, when someone describes the effect that was done by a magician, they elaborate so much. And I think that can go well, back I think to this that one story. would be like, oh, well, I thought of any single playing card and that card was reversed in the deck. Mm -hmm. That's like... But then people will add to that, won't they? Whereas if you just draw an X on someone's hand and it goes to their hand, I don't think that could be elaborated too much. It is yeah. so simplistic that they'll, they'll be but like, oh my God, that's... It, it all depends on 
the story and performance, doesn't it? So mm-hmm. rather than saying, think of a card, look, your card's that reverse in the deck. It's yeah, a bit yeah. of a shit trick, really. Yeah. It's magical because mm-hmm. they've thought of that, but you need to have something else Whereas in. Whereas Double Crash, you don't really need much of a story with it. No. You literally can be like, put your hand out. No, the clean one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then literally do it from there, right? Yeah. It's an Omni deck. It's a, you can do that in so many scenarios. You can do your during your ambitious card. You can do it as a standalone effect. So yeah, then there's um, the classic thing of the spider on the palm. Oh yeah. But then I think there's a new one. Is it Lady Ladybug or something like that? Yeah. There's a new one that's come out. So they're using. It was a cockroach one once, wasn't it? Yeah. Cockroach Whereas that spider. one's more like shock factor. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's quite a nice one. Do you know what? i tell you another thing that people get remembered for. And it's um, when I ask my question, have you ever seen a magician before? And people go, yes, I've seen him at weddings. And I say, <laughs> what do they do? I was in eight, eight, or nine, ten, eight or nine people out of ten <laughs> always say a card trick, but sometimes mm-hmm. I get other answers. Yeah. Um, and it's quite often all we took, especially at weddings, he took mm-hmm. my wedding ring yeah. and he put it in a box of Smarties, he put it in a lemon, he put it in a, a wallet. Mm. He always put it in some place like that or it's attached to his keys. Mm. And then another thing that I often get is, oh, he steals watches. Yeah. He steals cufflinks. He deal like... That's what uh, Paul Litton. Yeah. That's what he So many for. times it's like, he'll do this performance for a group of people mm. and then he'll go away and then just flip me, just come back, just like, back. there's yours. There's yours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's that's something that he's been remembered for, isn't mm-hmm. it? So always stealing people's watches. <laughs> uh, not saying you're a thief. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. I know if you weren't a magician, you get arrested for that. But you can do it. What the yeah, you can literally do whatever you want when you're a magician. Well, there's something. It was on a podcast I listened to saying magicians can do whatever they want. So if they go up to someone and say, "Right, I want you to stand on this table. I want you to put your hands in the air, and I want you they'll to do, do something," they'll do it because they think like, it's part of the trick. Did you see that one? Um, I think Chris Ramsey put that video about, is it Judy Carter? Did yeah. Did you watch that one? I did, yeah. And she did something on a, on a thing and she was like, oh, can I, um, have you got a, have you got a ring I can borrow? Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, like, can I borrow oh, your, can I borrow your purse? Can I borrow your purse? Oh, can I have your watch? <laughs> oh, what is it? And then she does into something funny. It was classed out with, with the Lincoln rings. It was like, oh, it's not working. And it was connected to the microphone. Yeah, and I stuff love like that. that. I and literally that, went out and bought some Lincoln rings the like, other day, you know, because <laughs> I saw yeah. that. I was just like, I'm going to do that. But there's not many people do that, so that could be another thing that you're yeah. memorable for. Yeah. Because have you seen um, oh, what do you call it? You know the Lincoln Ring ones from down. Was it Matthew Garrett mm-hmm. down at Blackpool mm-hmm. Ninja Plus yeah, yeah. with a ring? Like yeah. that's something. His, like he's he's had that. I think he had that this year, and he had still another thing last year. And that's purely all he sells, isn't it? But he's yeah. the he's the best of it. Yeah, it's, it's unreal. <laughs> Absolutely unreal at it. Um. Yeah, that, well, that's something we remember him for, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, maybe, what? maybe an old classic, brought back, in a different scenario. You know, as like a comedy club, mm. doing the Lincoln Rings. It's an old classic trick that probably people have forgot about now. The yeah. Men and people that probably have never seen it before. Mm. And then you doing something funny like that. Oh, this is the guy that does this sort of funny acting. Yeah. And it links onto everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could do something like that. And then we said in the other episode, like the um, the card on ceiling, that's something. That's probably to be the most memora- memorable card trick that I get picked. Mm-hmm. You know, I get told, sorry. Um, you know, oh, what did you do? I picked a card, and uh, instead of saying, "Oh, he found it," mm. he always says, "Oh, and it ended up on the ceiling." <laughs> so, if you're gonna do a card trick, do that. Mm. So let build a set now. If you were to do a memorable set, what would you do? If you were to add one card trick, mm. um, and then maybe two other, three other tricks. If you were doing a table now, what four tricks would you put in to be memorable? Well, most people probably start with double cross. Yeah. Like. Yeah, that, I, staple. I think that's thing. mine as well. <laughs> if I, yeah, I'd probably do. If it was an ambitious card, you do a start with a card trick, ambitious card trick, mm. um, then card on ceiling. Yeah. Um, because, just. Do that, and then kind of see that that's memorable. Then go into something completely different with double cross, and then I don't know something in the middle, maybe steal the watch so during. <laughs> yeah, steal. But the then you could do something with another card trick, end with Omni deck. And I always end. I always end end with Omni deck. Because I don't know whether you could do ambitious card, 
card on sale and, and then the Omni deck's in the box, so you pull it out with maybe it's like a Joker mm -hmm. and say, oh look, all the cards have disappeared apart from your card on sale and, and this one card. And Yeah. Another trick that I do, uh, which I use it to close, is if I really enjoy the table, really having good good crack, or I'm just quiet and I want to do a little bit more for them. <laughs> Um, if I don't do it, I don't like you, by the way. Uh, no, I'm um, But I always do socks. I'm always wearing them. I think it's a hell of a good trick. Yeah. And I always do socks to, to finish, especially if there's a kid there. Like, I'll always do socks. I always go, I ask you a personal question. Who's just the washing at home? And I go from there. And I think that's a great one because I've already done, with my Omni deck trick, I always force the same card. Yeah. When I'm doing socks. Because on the bottom of the socks, there's the mm -hmm. reveal as well so I'll say it's crazy like you could have picked any card I, I could have you could have picked any socks I could have been wearing any socks today but mm -hmm. just so happens that I was wearing these You that card all makes sense now because yeah. on the bottom of these socks I, I reveal the card so it's like an extra little kick mm -hmm. as well so I've been told a few times like oh you're the guy with the socks aren't you I'm like yeah I am <laughs> I am the guy with the socks so I really need to get a new pair yeah because I've been using <laughs> these ones for ages maybe the Halloween ones and Halloween and Christmas ones as well mm. Are we good to go? Oh, yeah. So we're back after some technical difficulties there. Yeah. What did we put in the middle? What did we put you in the middle? A sponsor in the middle. <laughs> you could have a sponsor by then. Yeah. Sponsored by magicforbeginners.co.uk. Yes. And <laughs> is this yours? INX clothing. Yeah. Flog it. Flog I, it. INX.co.uk. There you go. Buy some merch. So not that'll the, be. Not this Daniel Madison hoodie, but uh, you can get all the magic shit. So. <laughs> In that little technical gap, are we putting a a little advertisement? We'll have that advertisement there. Get in there. <laughs> and if anyone pays us, we'll put some more in there, I suppose, <laughs> if we're going to make any money from this. Yeah. What were we talking maybe about? Maybe we'll, uh, we'll get sales in double cross, get commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've said it enough times. We'll speak to Graham at Magic Box. Magic, can we get 10% off? <laughs> we'll give a discount code for everyone. We'll give a discount code, yeah, that'd be great. Well, hey, what about like this? Thing. It was like a memorable thing. Rubik's Cube, Many yeah. people do I Rubik's don't personally cubes. do them, but people that do Rubik's Cube magic can be, uh, you know, can be remembered for Rubik's Cube magic. You know, I the Rubik's Cube trick that I always know is the, the one where they match. Mm. Uh, you, you mix one, I mix one, they match. Yeah. Uh, cube in bottle. Mm. That's something that I always remember, but you don't see that unless it's in a show, do you? Mm. Because you can't really walk around with the whole bag and the bottle and everything and make it, you know. Yeah. Um, you could do like, Singular Rubik's Cube. Oh, yeah. Stuff. You could, you know, if you can solve with one hand, you could do it behind your back, throw it up, and everything mm. like that. You could be known as the Rubik's Cube guy. Or but even just get them to select a colour and then do one side. So you've got orange as a side already done. So mm. you can predict that. Because all the other rest of it is potentially looks mixed up. You can still mix it and then show an orange. So would you, there how you does go. it? I don't. Think, think of a fruit. Banana. <laughs> All right, I'll just do yellow. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't do Rubik's cube stuff. But no, I think it'd be. I would like to learn to do more, but it, but yeah, it's yeah. just look, look, know, it's just like, get get the algorithm. I'd, happy, I'd probably smash it up and just put it together. I've done that once. Just peel the labels off. Peel the labels off. I ended up taking it out. Do you know it's just a ball in the middle <laughs> with like little clips and these corners just pop off. Yeah. I did that once because I could not be bothered to uh, learn how to do it. I was watching a video the other day. Apparently, there's some speed cubers cheating because they were trying to solve it, but they were like spinning this no corner way. piece around like that. No way. And that just works. Yeah. No so. way. <laughs> oh, yeah, this piece is dead. Just twist it. Die. So you can see them do it. Maybe 10 seconds. Like really quick and, yeah. That's crazy. Probably that's that. one way to cheat with it. No way. <laughs> I've never thought of that. You learn something new every day. You really do. I think I've so learned something you're, new every single So if you're ever in a struggle and you want to like try and cheat at Rubik's Cube, just I've twist the corners. I think I've every single podcast we've done. <laughs> you keep teaching me stuff. Absolutely. So what about for other things like so with me not being a full-time magician, mm -hmm. but still doing magic, I get known as the photographer that does magic. That's your thing. That That's memorable. That's your thing. Yeah. Just doing that, that's your thing. Like, I was at a wedding once, uh, one of my first weddings that I ever did. The videographer there was not a magician, but he, he was good with cardistry. Mm -hmm. And he was known as the, well, the guy that can do fancy stuff with cards. 
um, even though he wasn't a magician. Yeah. But do you think being remembered and, and doing all that fancy stuff, is that something that you're remembered for? So like flourishes and cardistry, mm. something like that. So if I came up to you at a wedding and I started doing all this fancy stuff for cards, then did tricks, Yeah. would you remember me more for the magic that I did or the, are you going to be wowed by Probably the, the cardistry the stuff. Cardistry. Unless you had some like big hard-hitting trick mm -hmm. that just gobs people. But you couldn't go and just do cardistry at a wedding. Hey, look no. at this, I can just <laughs> get them all over. But uh, it goes back a bit to what we were saying a few podcasts ago. That you know, if you can do all that fancy stuff, then... yeah, then you'll easily be able to do card tricks because you can yeah. manip manipulate cards and put them wherever you want. But I think that's a, that's a memorable thing, you know, doing cardistry. Because how many people other than us and magicians have seen cardistry? Mm. It's always on YouTube and stuff like that. But layman and stuff, they're not going to be going. Cardistry, YouTube, you know, and stuff like that. They're not going to be yeah. watching that sort of videos. We, we watch it because it, it, we, we appreciate it. But um, that I think that's one of the best things that you're going to be remembered for if you can do cardistry because no one's seen it before. No mm. one's doing it on TV. No one's doing it on well, Britain's Got Talent or stuff like Ashley that. Ashley Goodwin so, on America's Got Talent. She was doing a bit cardistry. Was she? Mm. Did she do magic as well? Yeah. But I, what I'm saying is if you're good enough at doing cardistry, you know, here's an idea for someone that can do it. Go on Britain's Got Talent. Because everyone, Cause everyone <laughs> not us, but, we're, you know, layman watch I, it. I do catch up on YouTube. Yeah, I see the, I see the magicians and stuff like that when it pops mm. up. But do something like that, because no, I don't think anyone's done it. We've just purely I done think, all the, the um, card stuff. I've seen, I think on Canada's Got Talent, mm -hmm. there's the card manipulation Okay, maybe I'm just out of date with everything. I can't and I, who it was. I think there was a few. I've got you to back me up on everything that I say. I'm like, I haven't seen this before. Yeah, it's been done. That. All right. I think there was a few that they were on. They were doing like obviously the cards appearing out of nowhere and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like that's been really popular. Did the, hasn't it? Did the you watch the Sunday Gala show? Uh, yeah, I went to everyone. Yeah. Another guy with the the red background appearing all the cards and stuff. He was on Canada's Got Talent. Oh, was he? Or America's Got Talent, one of them. Mm -hmm. And they were doing that, and that's like. Well, I think that's become a lot popular this like lately, hasn't it? Uh, especially the last few gala shows that I've seen at Blackpool. I think there's always, last, there's always been a, a lot of manipulators. Was it last year or the year before? There was like three on yeah. on one of the gala shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but then again, that's you would be remembered for something like manipulation, especially yeah. that of that level, if you were doing it at a restaurant or a wedding. But um, the same with the coin stuff. Yeah, you don't see a great deal of people doing a lot of coin stuff. Like, when someone says, like, coin, magician, manipulation, like, who would you think? I think of Danny Goldsmith. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, most people would think of Danny Goldsmith. So magician therefore, wise. Yeah, he's memorable as... Well, to us, yeah. but in a, in a layman's point of view, from weddings and, and gigs and stuff like this, mm. who's remembering coin stuff? Hmm. I I haven't heard one of their answers yet. I haven't had. Oh, this guy did this thing with the a only coin. thing extreme boy, which isn't a coin. It's notes. It's money, yeah. But I'm trying to think, because I don't do coin stuff. No. The only things that I can remember coin stuff is the dynamic coins when I was younger, <laughs> and that's literally my extent of coin tricks. I think um, most for me is probably like French drop. Yeah. But I yeah. do a trick. There you go. All's that. Oh look, it's in it's your hand. Or it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Plucks out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, so I say coin tricks are out the window. So. Yeah. Other memorable things like for the eccentricness. Yeah. In the way you act or look. Hundred percent, Chris. I mean, <laughs> uh, he dresses. He dresses unique, yeah. and that's what I remember before. If I saw him at a gig, yeah, um, dressing unique. But there's like, obviously it's, from a magician's point of view, it's like Kyle Purnell, yeah. big red glasses. Yeah. Keith, if you were doing a, a gig, like what's your like memorable outfit? Like what, how would I know you're the magician? What would you wear? I don't know. Nothing? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like so, I, I, I'm sort of quite memorable and known when I'm shooting weddings because... I don't wear a shirt and waistcoat and mm -hmm. whatever. I've got a long, 
long line black t-shirt on the front is a tux design so it oh, looks yeah. like I'm wearing a tuxedo and then on the back it's got Wednesday by Fusco Media so you're still dressed professionally but you've got a bit of yeah, so comedy in there yeah every wedding I get I like your tux I like your t-shirt yeah. I like this like people recognise it as like it's quirky I and that, that's, really that's the way that I am as well. Like, I think that's really good. I think it's a good way. So it's a way of, I can be nice and relax and enjoy the day, not like stressing about things, oh, shit, yeah. my shares come out, this, this, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still you're sort still sort of, I don't know, you're more dressed up than everyone else because you're wearing a tuxedo. Yeah. Whereas you're not actually wearing a tuxedo. Yeah. All I wear, I think it's really cliche, to be fair. I wear a, a velvet jacket that mm. I, I've seen once and I just thought, oh, I've got to wear that. <laughs> And then in the same shop a few weeks later, I saw some sparkly pants. Yeah. Um, but they're not like sequins or anything, so they're like sparkly, like a netting over them. Mm. Uh, and there was a jacket as well, the jacket that didn't have any jackets that fit me. Yeah. Um, so I ended up just getting the sparkly pants. But so now I wear the sparkly pants with <laughs> the velvet jacket. And I've uh, got a, a bright sparkly silver jacket. Oh, you really? Yeah. I want to see it. Afterwards. <laughs> I want to see it. From ASOS. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go on there. I was browsing, I was like, I want some like horrible thing. I did a um I think I was photographing an event for a, a solicitor's company and I had like solicitors and insurers and stuff. And this guy in like this proper vibrant, like out there sequin mm-hmm. jacket thing, I was like, I want one like that. I need to be like that. <laughs> a buddy of mine at work actually went as a, in a to his prom in a camo right. tuxedo. And I no think- one could see him. No, I didn't know he was, didn't know he was there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I, I, I don't know, I wasn't at this school, but in another school that I know, a friend of mine said, oh, someone went in like a mirror jacket. Yeah. So he's just basically like a disco ball. <laughs> you know, I think it's about what you wear as well, right? Yeah. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm known yet for the guy with sparkly pants, but, yeah. because it's not until I normally like stand back or walk away, people go, ah, oh, love your trousers, <laughs> love your pants. I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, your your idea there with the t shirt that's really unique because as much as you have to kind of dress up at a wedding and especially if you've been there but like mm-hmm. if you're a little comedy like magician and stuff like that and you wore something like that it's like oh, what what's that guy wearing oh what's he doing no he's the magician and then yeah. you kind of or you could have like it. on the back of it like you sort of branded on the bottom like mm-hmm. I do so for us for example when we're taking pictures and filming people take pictures of that mm-hmm. it's got the branding on the back. So you have that magician, then. yeah. And then you could also have, like, tap me on the shoulder, to show you a trick, something like that. You could. Here's ideas for you, and get in touch with Keith because Keith, <laughs> I you can buy them. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just start making them now so no one else does? Well, I've done loads of <laughs> things good. like um, hidden reveals on t-shirts. Not under, like underneath. And stuff. No, like on the sleeve. All oh, right. So, Cause you put it on the inside, so you lift your t-shirt up. Yeah. So this one is you put your deck of cards on there. You fold it up, and it's right at the place when you fold it up. You've got the card there. Hey, look at that! And you printed them. Mm-hmm. So that's any any prints, anything you want. Contact some you. some other way to be memorable is like something different. Something different. Yeah. Like I picked a card, and that card was printed on his t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like at wedding fairs now. I think we t- I, d- I think we touched on this in uh, another podcast, but I've been taking uh, one of my illusions because, as I said in a previous one, I collect magic and I collect illusions and stuff like this, and I collect loads of different things, cards, everything. Um, and now I take a chair suspension um, to wedding fairs, so I have I don't use the table that they set up. I literally have my own little table, the chair suspension there with my uh, banner behind it, and now I just let people come and take pictures and. You know that that's you know that's memorable for for them for me mm. because they're like oh well even though I didn't you yeah. just got on a thing and I took a chair away <laughs> he made this he made the bride levitate and all yeah. this so I'm I'm getting known and more memorized for that mm. you know he's the guy that does the levitation at uh, wedding fairs and stuff yeah. go see him mm. go book him for the illusion show at the wedding yeah so that's that's another thing. Because as I said, no one's doing that. So I think I think I'm very niche in doing this. You know, doing illusions at weddings because it's just purely because no one else is doing it. Yeah. So I'm kind of being the only one to be memorable for that. Mm. If you know what I mean. But I think even if other people do it, there's certain things that you'd be memorable for anyway. Like yeah, hundred percent. Because 
Unless they copy you and do the exact same illusions. Yeah, yeah. Which, it, no two illusions are the same. Yeah. You've got your generic ones, but, like, cutting in half a lady, there's so many cutting in half ones, you know. Some use maybe two people. I don't know. Some <laughs> may use fake legs. Mm. Some may not. Mine, I don't, I, I'd use one person, mm. and it just it happens to work <laughs> so there's so many so you know but at the end of the day that's still cutting someone in half to anyone, mm. anyone um, whether you do it with two people or a fake legs or however you do it yeah um, but yeah no two illusions are the like you, you can still cut someone in half and stuff like that and um, what else do I have I have the metamorphosis drunk that I do that with but uh, I, you know I don't suppose anyone's going to find the same illusions and do them exactly the same anyway do you know because yeah. I have a comedy routine with with uh, my old illusions, which all works in in the end because mm. it's a uh, whole revenge and stuff like this yeah. at the assistant. So, but people are people are doing that, but again, not at weddings. So mm. that's how I'm sort of trying to be more memorable in that sort of sense. I'm trying to think of the like specific magicians who are memorable for certain things. As to Dynamo know, like... for walking on water. Yeah. Everyone that I spoke to it says, oh, have you seen a magician before? Yeah, I've seen Dynamo on TV. All right, what, what do you remember? Uh, it's uh, Walking on Water. <laughs> Even though he wasn't the first to do it. Yeah. Jesus was. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but do you remember years ago, a mind freak by, by Chris yeah. Angel? Mm -hmm. Do you remember he, he walked in a pool? Yeah. Um, so he was one of the first people to do it, I think. And then the mass magician revealed how that one's done. And then obviously... Dynamo went and did it in the Thames. Uh, what else? I suppose like, David Blaine's memorable for all of his stunts rather than magic nowadays. Yeah, like, apart from, uh, was it Fruit Loops? Fruit Loops? Yeah. What no, from the, the special with the ambitious card one, Fruit Loops. No. I was like... Do I know this? Should I see it? Should I see, is this a David yeah. Blaine special? Yeah. I've seen them, and I don't, so I don't he's like remember. doing the street magic for these like people, and this guy called Fruit Loops. He's like signing the card, so he's doing the ambitious. Wait, card. is this the kid that goes, cool? No, is that, it that kid? That's one with the coin. I think it was. All oh, right, he's okay. Like, it's vanished. He's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this Fruit Loops one. He's like, also do the ambitious card. He's like, look, your cards come to the top, and the guy's like trying to grab the cards and stuff like that. He's like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> he's like, look, your card. And he does like the the bend mm -hmm. for the ambitious card, and then obviously jump. It's like what? what, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, he he brought street magic like back, didn't he? And obviously like the the Balducci or Balducci levitation, like with him doing that, it's quite known for that. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays so, though, like obviously he like, brought back street magic, but yeah. nowadays it's always the regurgitating frogs and like the <laughs> frogs and, like, <laughs> stabbing himself in the hand, yeah. like, crazy bastard. Um, <laughs> but. I think it's all of his stunts that he's done over the years. You know, especially being from England, the one that I remember the most is the one that I seen on TV. It was the locked in a box for mm. was it forty four days. Yeah, well, I'd actually, I wasn't into magic then, and I was down London when he did that, and I went to visit him. Oh yeah, not personally. No, but no. I went to, Didn't went lock to the, the door. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you, you seen like, him hanging there? Yeah. No way. You got a picture? I don't know. I don't think so. If you did, you'd have to find it. I know. I think it was before, like, digital cameras and stuff. Like. Yeah. But that that's what I remember him for the most, hanging in a box. Because, purely because I'm from England, so that happened here. Yeah. So that's probably why I remember that. And then that apparently song. everyone throwing McDonald's burgers I and stuff like that. I remember that, yeah. Because wasn't... Trying like, to cut, someone tried to cut the box down as well. Was it, was, it, um, was it live on the news all the time? Was, was there a channel? I, I vaguely remember it, but wasn't there a channel dedicated to just a live stream of it? I'm not sure. I have Possibly. the vague memory that it there was. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I'm sure because I was I was always in the magic. I'm like, Dad, put David Blaine on. I can I can always remember there was always updates on it though. Yeah, there was always like, an update, so it must have always been on the news. Mm -hmm. And I always remember because we used to watch it every single day. I, mean, I was watching a man in a box. <laughs> That's all I was watching. Starving but, himself. Starving himself <laughs> for forty four days. But I just thought like. I'm sure that I'm sure there was a live stream dedicated to it. If there wasn't, <laughs> there should have been a constant live stream. Like it was nowadays, probably fifty six k modem back when it was. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, if if you did it nowadays, you could probably just stream it on Twitch. Yeah, and be on there. 
and TikTok and YouTube and everything yeah. else all at everything the same time. On there. <laughs> Just imagine you doing that on TikTok now. <laughs> Please send the roses. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be on there all the time, like browsing stuff, and I was just like, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> it's such a constant. There's like the live ones, there used to be all the ones where they had all the, um, people used to buy this stuff and they get all the crystals. I was like, oh, what? wow, a tower. I was like, you got a tower, you got this, you got this. Next person, this, this, and this. And I was like, crystals? Yeah. So they used to have this, like, essentially a washing machine, okay. like on its side, and they used to spin around with, like, used to put all the crystals in, and, oh, like, these balls. So they had, like, a, um, like a sieve or something, and you used to pick it up, shake out all the little, little balls, uh, and you left yeah, with the crystals, yeah. and then package them up. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you you buy your order online as like a mystery thing, and then you watch it being picked. <laughs> well, it's just like, I've never seen that. Absolutely mental. I mean, the latest trend is Spudman. Spudman. You've never seen Spudman? No. This is another conversation <laughs> for another time. If you haven't seen Spudman, where have you been? Are you on still on TikTok? No, I deleted. Oh, right, okay, that's why you don't know who Spudman is. <laughs> He's just some guy that sells Jack potatoes in uh, right? Tamsworth. Oh, like Wakey Wines. Yeah, I mean, that was like, like, like Wakey Wines, but... It was, it was like, funny, so... For us, that's just a general thing, like, Wakey Wines, Abdul, <laughs> come closer, Abdul, go back. Yeah. And we're like, a standard thing, that. Yeah. And I remember, I went down to Peter Turner's when we were filming this thing with Nicholas Hans and Pig uh-huh. Cake was over, obviously from America, Miami. Uh-huh. And we're trying to explain him, was like, so there's a shop in Wayfield, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it got famous on TikTok because you go in and you buy a bottle of Prime for, for like 20 quid. 20 quid. Okay, right? It was like, and he's got these things like bingo, bingo, gala, bingo and stuff like that. It's like, okay, so how's this famous? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, how is it famous? Yeah. How did that become famous? And then I think we'd, uh, we went around a couple of places, went uh, to Whippy. Because this is being stuff. remembered. Yeah. He's remembered for saying, Abdul, come closer, Abdul, go back. Yeah. And we were going to Whitby, and then we were going past somewhere else, and I was like, Wakefield, that's how the conversation got on. It's like, you've seen Wakey Wines? Like, no, what's that? (laughs) So uh, just trying to bring some, like, English heritage into the the American. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, Spudman is purely just a guy that sells jack of potatoes that went viral, and he gets it all. It's like one pound fish? Yeah, one pound fish over there. (laughs) But he just, he sells... (laughs) Maybe like two thousand spuds a day now. Yeah. The the queue's like do you remember <laughs> Binley Mega Chippy? Yeah. So it's basically like that. Right. But he's already said he's like, I'm gonna ride this wave out as long as I can <laughs> and because I'm making a fortune. Yeah. And he is. So good on him. Good on you. So man. to be remembered as a magician. <laughs> do double cross. <laughs> Final thoughts. Sell prime. <laughs> Sell spuds. Have a chippy. And as and a magician do double cross. Just do double cross. <laughs> An Omni deck. That's it. Final thoughts. Yeah. That's it. So we'll leave you with that. Okay. Great speaking to you all time. again. See ya. See ya.